Hey there everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to make this beautiful crepe paper poinsettia garland. Let's go over the supplies we're going to need for this project. Okay, so the supplies you're going to need for this project is some floral wire. I'm using a 22 gauge wire here. Um, I recommend that it be something that is fairly flexible um, so that you can, you know, manipulate your petals and your flowers as you wish um, as we build the garden. So you don't want anything too stiff that won't let you have some flexibility. You're also going to need a thicker floral wire. Um, this is just like a garland wire that you can get at most craft stores and I also have resources online for this as well. Um, and it's great because you can cut it to whatever size you want and this is what we're going to be putting the leaves and the poinsettias onto. To actually make our leaves we're using crepe paper for this tutorial and I'm using a metallic gold and silver ombre crepe paper and a white for the poinsettias. You can make this in any color you want. You can even use cardstock paper if you don't want to use crepe paper. I will be using my Cricut Maker Machine to cut my crepe paper with the rotary blade. But like I said, if you don't um, have the Cricut Maker, you have the Explorer or a different model of machine that can't cut crepe, you can absolutely use cardstock and follow along the same way. You just won't be um, you just won't be using the exact same texture of paper that we're using here. So definitely doable whether you're using cardstock or crepe paper. But I will be using crepe paper. This is 180 gram crepe paper. Um, you can use lighter crepe paper. And I'm going to talk about the settings um, in a minute as far as what settings to use uh, if you use the heavier crepe paper. If you use the lighter crepe paper, I'll explain um, what setting also to use. But I like to use the heavy. Um, just because it has a deeper grain to the paper, a deeper texture, and I find that that stands out a little bit more on my garland, and I like that look. But if you like the thinner crepe paper, then by all means use that. And of course, if you use cardstock, then you won't be, um, you won't have any grain. Um, additionally, you also need some corsage tape, or they also call it floral tape. I'm using it in white to complement what I'm doing here, but you can use green, or um, I think they even make brown. I'm also using some pearl stamen here. I got these at my local craft store. Um, I also have an online resource for them as well. If you can't find any of these or you don't wish to purchase online, you can easily make them by using some really thin jewelry wire and a pearl bead and just threading the wire through and twisting it. And I make these in clusters and we're going to be covering them so that it has a nice matching look to the center of our poinsettia. You also need some wire clippers just to clip down what we're doing here, a pair of detail scissors, and then for your mats for your Cricut machine, if you're using the heavier crepe paper, I recommend going with the strong grip mat um, because the grain is so deep with the heavy crepe paper that you really want to make sure um, that it's able to stick really well. I've tested all three mats and the strong grip mat works best with the heavy crepe paper. Now, if you're using the thinner crepe paper, the more traditional, it'll be like 60 to 80 gram crepe paper, then you'll want to use the fabric grip mat. Um, because then if you use the strong grip, it'll probably tear your paper. So use the fabric grip. If you're using the lighter crepe paper, use your strong grip. If you're using the heavier weight crepe paper, okay? So those are the supplies you're going to need. Of course, you'll also need a glue gun. Any glue gun will do. I recommend a high temp glue gun as well. So most crepe paper comes in rolls like this. You may find some that doesn't, but in most cases it will be in a roll. So you will need to cut this down. So I just make sure, you can use a measuring tape where I just sort of use my mat and kind of eyeball it to where it's nearly the full 12 inches across. And I just trim this down. So I'm gonna place my crepe paper at the top corner of my mat there. And with any crepe paper, you want to make sure it's pressed really well. You don't want to just stick it like this, even though this is a strong grip mat. You want to really smooth out the wrinkles. Um, this is called like smoothing or pressing is burnishing. And if you have a Cricut scraper, you can also use this. Just do it very gently. If you're using the um, fabric mat with a lighter crepe paper, you can absolutely do the same thing. I recommend it. It really helps the crepe paper to stick to the mat and not to lift up when it's cutting through all of these little ridges that are in the grain of our crepe paper. 
Okay, so once you get your crepe paper stuck, then you'll wanna make sure to load your rotary blade into your Cricut machine. This only works with the Cricut Maker, so once again, if you're using an Explorer or a different machine that can't cut crepe paper, then make sure you um, use you know, cardstock paper. You could hand cut this if you want to, um, but I know that that's a lot of work, so um, cardstock paper will work absolutely fine with a fine point blade. So I'm gonna load my rotary blade into my Cricut machine, and I already have my SVG file set up and ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and load that. And it's gonna go ahead and start cutting out. It'll of course first detect your tool to make sure you have the right tool installed. Now, a lot of times with many of our materials, we can sort of just set it and walk away. With crepe paper, I do recommend that you watch the cut um, and make sure that nothing is getting caught. Um, crepe paper can be a little finicky compared to other materials, so I like to stand and watch my cuts. If I see anything lifting, I press it back down, or um, if something actually comes off altogether, I might remove it from the mat while it's cutting other pieces. Um, that's just wise to make sure your whole cut doesn't get ruined. Um, if you're using the strong grip mat and you burnished, you shouldn't have any problems. If it's not sticking to the strong grip mat, highly recommend getting a fresh mat. That's probably um, what it will need at that point is a fresh mat. Again, you can use any color here. I just wanted to go with sort of a silver, gold, and white theme um, for holiday decor, decor this year. So um, I really like this combination. I think it's kind of different and fun, but still very Christmassy. Now, as you're removing your crepe paper from your mat, just go really slow. You don't want to stretch it or anything, so just lift very carefully. Anything didn't cut all the way through, then just take your detail scissors and snip it. Sometimes there's like a, a sharp corner and the rotary blade misses a little bit. So like this piece here, see how it's sticking a little? I'm just gonna gently use my fingers to pull that back. Okay, so now at this point, we need to assemble our leaves and our poinsettia. I'm gonna start with the leaves and we'll, then we'll move on to the poinsettia. So um, like I said here, I have 22 gauge wire. You can use 24 as well. Um, I'm going to trim this in half because we don't need the wire to be this long. So I'm gonna trim mine down using my wire clippers. And we're gonna add a line of glue here, place our wire and then place the other leaf on top of it. <clears throat> so that's my thin line of glue I'm adding there. And I'm gonna place my wire right on top there and then add the overlap of the other leaf, the other side of the leaf. Now you'll notice here when you get to this point that um, you're gonna probably have a little extra overlap on the top and the bottom. So that's when you grab your detail scissors and the one that is underneath, just trim it and it'll look smooth again. Okay, just like that. Then once you have that done, you can slowly shape the center and the curve of your leaf with that wire that we added there and there is how you make this crepe paper leaf for our garland. And you're just gonna repeat this for as many as you'll need to fill your garland. Um, so you're gonna wanna decide what length of your garland that you're gonna have, how you know tight together you want your leaves to be. So now we're going to do the same thing to start assembling the poinsettia petals. We cut those out in the white crepe paper, and now we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the leaves. I'm going to be matching up the two sides. Unless for any reason you're making these poinsettias and you want them to have really long stems, you can also cut the wire in half because we're gonna be adding it to a garland so they really don't need to have long stems. So I'm adding that thin line of glue just like I did with the leaves. I'm placing that wire on and then I'm overlapping it with the other side of the petal. And then if you need to, even up your tips or edges at all, then go ahead and do that with your detail scissors. And then you can shape the poinsettia petal the same way, just like that. And what I do here is I use five to six of the large petals and then five to six of the small. 
I have all of my poinsettia petals ready to go. And to start making the poinsettia, we have to first make the center. Now, I told you about these in the beginning. They're just little pearls um, strung on some really thin jewelry wire. You can find them already assembled online and in craft stores usually, um, or you can just make them yourself. And you could leave them this color if you want, um, but I like to cover them in crepe paper. So I'm just going to take, I usually take for the poinsettia, I usually take about six um, of these pearls call them like pearl stamens, I guess you could say. Um, so I have about six here, two clusters of three. And to match my garland that we're gonna be working with, I've just cut a little bit of my crepe paper off here. And I'm just gonna cut this down a little bit more. It's still quite big. I'm just cutting little squares. And then I'm gonna stretch the crepe paper out like this. And I'm gonna come over to one of my little pearls here and I'm just going to place it over it. Kind of think of it like you're covering a piece of candy with a candy wrapper. And I'm just going to twist until the pearl is covered and the crepe paper is snug at the bottom there. Now, for my crepe paper, I don't need to add any glue. It holds pretty well by itself. Um, if for any reason it's unraveling, then just add a dab of glue there and then just finish twisting and then that'll hold just fine. I'm just going to repeat this now, so I'm just going to stretch my crepe paper out, trim it down to like a square or a rectangle sort of size. Usually a square is best so the sides are even. And then I'm just going to place it and twist. Again, if you need to, just add a little bit of glue if it's not holding for you. Just add a little glue at the base there. You can make additional stamen for these to act as berry clusters on your garland vine which I am going to do to mine at the end, and I'll show you that um, once our garland is put together. Now that we have the center staining complete, we're going to start assembling our poinsettia. Before you go any further, you do need to cut some strips of floral tape so you have them ready to go and easy to grab off of your desk. And we're going to be starting with the pearl stamen, and I'm just gonna wrap these two clusters together so they hold together. Just gather them in a position that you're happy with how they will appear inside the flower, and then wrap it with your floral tape. If your floral tape doesn't stick initially, then you can always start it with a little dab of glue. Uh, if it's fresh floral tape, it should have enough stickiness that you can wrap it and it will hold by itself. Okay, so there we go. We have our pearl stamen center ready to go. And now I'm going to gather, I have all of my, my petals prepped and ready to go here. We're going to be building from the inside out of our flower. So I have six um, of each petal here. I have six smaller ones and I have six of the larger ones. But if five or seven come together better for you, then that's totally fine as well. So you're first going to start by holding the stamen center and then just start to place the petals around the center. Don't worry about them looking perfectly symmetrical at this point. Um, because we're adding each petal individually, you can easily just manipulate them even after we've wrapped our corsage tape. So I usually work with just a few at a time. Um, so I've added three here and I'm going to just add my floral tape around the stems so that holds them in place and then you can see you can still manipulate them to shape them as you wish. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to add my other three here and I'm just going to get them placed as best I can and then I'll sort of just um, shape them later on. Also take note here that I'm sort of keeping my petals so that they're fanned the same direction. One is always overlapping the previous one in the same way. Um, and once again, you can still manipulate that if you don't have it right the first time when you add your uh, floral tape. But just kind of keep that in mind because it does make the flower look a little bit more natural to have them all tucked the same direction. So I've added my six and I'm just wrapping those up in my floral tape. This is why it's important to have all those pieces of floral tape ready to go so you can just grab them and you don't try to hold something while cutting the scissors. And you can just kind of play with them here for a minute. And now we're gonna add on the larger leaves. I have six of those. 
Um, try and aim to have them placed so that they are um, in between two of the petals that we just placed, the center smaller petals. So notice that I'm taking these and I'm placing them so that they're not directly in line with the petals below it. Once again, if it doesn't fall perfectly, you can still um, move them around even after you've added the floral tape. Okay, I'm getting that tape wrapped around the stem there. Now I can sort of manipulate the petals so that they're um, kind of placed in between those smaller petals. I need to cut a little bit more floral tape here. I'm going to add my last three, and then once you get all the petals added, you can really concentrate on shaping the flower to perfection. Again, just kind of work on tucking the petals so that they're all sort of tucked the same direction around the center of the flower. Um, so that'll just make it look a little bit more even. Focus on where the petal points are kind of falling, making it look, you know, as natural as you can. So I have everything done now. I've prepped all of my poinsettias. I've prepped a bunch of leaves the way I showed you. Um, I'm just going to set these poinsettias aside. You don't need to worry about the poinsettias until the very end. So we're going to work with making our garland now. I ended up with about 55 leaves for my garland. Um, mine was going to be about five foot wide, um, but that's going to depend on your space and what you're looking for. So if yours is going, you want yours to be smaller or longer, just think about that. Um, but I ended up with about 55 leaves. So first thing we need to do is we need to measure out our floral wire that we're actually going to be attaching these leaves to. Now I like to use this thick floral wire because you can cut it to any length. So just again think about what the length is that you want this garland to be. And it's a good idea to make sure that you cut more than you're going to need. So if you're aiming for a five foot garland, I would suggest cutting a six foot. Also notice I'm not stretching this wire all the way out. I like that it has a little bit of a natural loop-de-loop -loop to it, as <laughs> I guess you could say. Next, go ahead and move to the starting end of one of the ends of your garland. You're also going to want to go ahead and use your scissors to just go ahead and cut a bunch of strips of floral tape so you have them ready to go. I usually cut around three inches again, um, maybe four. You honestly don't need that much, but it's easier to work with a little bit longer uh, floral tape and wrap it. It's easier to wrap it when it's longer than shorter, so you might have to just cut a little extra just to make that easier on you. So I'm going to start with my leaves here. I'm not worried about, you know, which ones are going to go where as far as color. I just kind of doing it random so that it looks kind of natural. Um, so I'm going to focus on placing one at a time. And our wires are actually a little long still, so I'm just going to trim that down a little bit more. I'm use my wire clippers here to snip off a little bit. And I'm going to start at one end, and I'm going to line up the wire from the leaf to the wire of the garland and I'm going to grab a piece of my floral tape and start wrapping. After you get those first couple wraps around then you should be able to go a little bit faster um, and it won't scoot on you or anything like that. Uh, usually where my floral tape stops from the previous leaf is where I will add my next um, start my next leaf. Um, just because the um, the, the corsage tape, the floral tape here, the white tape that I'm using, you could be using green or brown, um, it's kind of going to show in place of the vine that we originally started with. Um, so I kind of like it to look all the same color as much as I can. Okay, so you can see I'm beginning to get some length here to my garland and it's starting to look really pretty. And so you'll just work gradually until you complete the length. have pretty much all of my leaves put on my garland now. Mine's about five feet long. Now for our um, our crepe paper poinsettias, I don't recommend adding these on until you're ready to style your garland wherever it's going to be displayed. So in my case it's going to be my mantle and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I place this on my mantle and then how I just stick my poinsettias in there. Um, these have of course wire stems which you can just sort of, I like to just tuck them in or you can sort of create like a little hook and just kind of hook them around there. That way they don't go flying off or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to show you that real quick how I set it up on my mantle. So I'm placing it here on my mantle. 
and I'm just going to sort of get it laid out the way I want it to. So remember I said that adding these leaves on individually is really wonderful because we can shape them forward or manipulate them in different ways. So right now if I just lay this, you can see some of the underside of the crepe paper, which I don't like. So I'm going to take some time to shape this and play with the leaves and get them all situated in a way that you can see the pretty side of our crepe paper. Once you get your garland and you're pretty happy with the way it's positioned, wherever it is that you're displaying your garland, then you want to go ahead and add in your poinsettia. So I just work with one or two at a time. Um, think about your spacing. And I like to take the bottom of my poinsettia and just create sort of a little hook with it. And you can just hook it around the garland so that it doesn't fall off and it stays in its position. So I'm going to start on the far end over here. And my poinsettias are rather large, so the garland becomes more of an accent rather than the focal point. If you wanted to make smaller poinsettias or just use the smaller poinsettia leaf to make more, you know, dainty poinsettias so that your garland is more the focal point, then you could do that as well. I kind of went a little bit big on my poinsettia flowers. Okay, and then kind of just stand back and look at it, see that you're happy with how it's styled. Um, so this is just one way to use this garland and I think it turned out pretty fabulous. It takes maybe an afternoon worth of work, but it's amazing and you can reuse it year after year uh, because they're paper flowers and they're not going to wilt. So um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to grab these templates on my blog, abigustincollections.com backslash garland, and I will see you all there.